my special guest tonight is Amali Yeshichela. He is the chairman of the African People's uh, Socialist Party, which leads the Uhuru uh, movement. Welcome back, Chairman Amali. Thank you very much for having me. It's good to be here again. So last time that uh, you were here, it was after the FBI had raided uh, one of the Uhuru movement homes in uh, Florida, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then sometime after that, apparently the Department of Justice decided to arrest uh, some of the members from the Uhuru uh, movement. And I do want to talk a little bit about that um, First and foremost, uh, I know that you were one of the members that that was arrested. How did those events actually, you know, transpire? And then I also want to talk about the update in reference to that particular situation as well. Well, the first thing I want to tell you is that uh, <clears throat> it was a coordinated uh, raid of uh, homes and offices uh, in two states uh, by the a federal government. Uh, they use uh, uh, armored vehicles and flashbang grenades and drones, and uh, they use battering rams and knock down doors. In one place, they knocked down every door. Uh, in one of our centers, they uh, stole uh, recording devices. They stole uh, 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 laptops and cell phones and things like that, and 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 also uh, financial records. And this happened on July 29th. And uh, we came to understand, however, uh, that the, this aggression against us in this period had begun earlier. On July, 20, on July uh, uh, 2nd, <clears throat> right before the 4th of July celebrations and what have you, uh, at the office in St. Petersburg, Florida, that was one of the places, the Uhuru House there, uh, that was attacked by the FBI on July 29th, uh, someone pulled up into the parking lot uh, and opened up uh, his trunk in broad daylight and took out a military grade flamethrower and torched a, a 15 by 25 foot uh, red, black, and green flag hanging from a 50 foot pole uh, out there uh, 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 next to the building. And so uh, we didn't recognize it then, uh, but it was a part of something that was developing and that it seemed to us that this attack on, on, on July 22nd <clears throat> was a strike. Uh, it was like a test run uh, that would happen. So uh, uh, then on July 29th, uh, as you mentioned, uh, our, our homes uh, were raided and offices and my home was raided. Uh, my wife and I were threatened. Uh, I, uh, it's pre-dawn when this occurs and uh, and out of the darkness, this booming voice on a loudspeaker uh, commands uh, us to come out with our hands uh, up and our hands empty, that this is the FBI. And uh, so, at, and when this happens, these, these explosions uh, began to go off uh, all around our house. And we were to later uh, learn that in the back stairwell of the house as well, they had uh, detonated these explosions. They call them flashbang grenades or concussion grenades. And uh, they tore up uh, plaster in the back of the house. And I asked my wife to, <clears throat> to allow me to go out first and that she should get on the phone and notify people that we were under attack. And uh, uh, so I went downstairs. She tried to do that on the phone, but our phones were jammed. And so she couldn't communicate with anybody. I get downstairs and uh, there's this military force standing there uh, in front of an armored vehicle. There are various numbers of these militarily attired men and women uh, standing there uh, with uh, assault weapons. And the assault weapons mounted uh, with laser targeting devices and all of them are hitting me in the chest. These are uh, letting me know that, uh, uh, that they could kill me. Uh, uh, that, uh, that they have the ability to kill me if I uh, should move in a fashion that they uh, found undesirable. If I should stumble, uh, the point was that it was a death threat. There was no doubt about that. And I'm, I'm remembering, of course, as they knew I would, uh, the murder of Fred Hampton uh, by the FBI and Chicago Police Department in, in December of 1969. Uh, they came there at four o'clock in the morning. Here, it's, it's five o'clock in the morning. So. When we get downstairs, uh, my wife, when she comes out the door, she's almost hit in the head uh, uh, by a drone that's going 
up the stairs as she comes out. Uh, this, they send the drone up, and so I get downstairs, and they, they zip tie me. Uh, they take my cell phone. They take, uh, uh, and my wife comes down, and they, they handcuff her behind her back. And so I'm inquiring, what is this about? Why are you doing this? And they say uh, that there's a Russian uh, national, uh, that an indictment is going to come down later that morning against a Russian national. And our name came up in the indictment, and, uh, my name did. And uh, so that's why they were doing that. And they had a search warrant for my home. I asked to see the search warrant. Uh, and they said, well, it is here someplace. but. Uh, uh, they, the person who was talking to me uh, didn't have it, he said. So uh, we, 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 we uh, engaged uh, 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 in this kind of uh, confrontation for a while, and they wanted me to sit on the curb, uh, you know, uh, 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 which was just a ridiculous, uh, ridiculous uh, uh, thing for them to, and it's humiliating. They, you see that all the time, they do young Africans like that, you see them sitting on the curb. It's, yep. it's a form of humiliation and, and domination, let you know, uh, you know that, that they have the power, et cetera, and they let the community know. And because at the same time, they've cordoned off the entire community. So the community is blocked off and, and uh, uh, people are terrified because they don't know exactly what's happening uh, here. They did this uh, in St. Louis. They did the same thing in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, they knocked down doors. They went uh, in St. Louis. I live in a in a predominantly African community here. In fact, it's one of the most economically depressed uh, sectors of the city of St. Louis at this moment. And so, uh, but across town, we have another office that's uh, uh, where the majority of white people live in South St. Louis. And uh, we have an office there, a solidarity center there that's uh, occupied and run about white people who do reparations work uh, uh, for for the African movement. And uh, so they this was one of the houses, that one of the offices, they knocked the doors down. Uh, they used flashbang grenades. They went upstairs where a couple lived, uh, one of whom Jesse Neville was to become one of the unindicted four uh, uh, members of our movement. They handcuffed him, they handcuffed the young woman uh, who is his wife uh, uh, also, uh, these are white people, and then they go uh, and and attack the home of uh, Penny Hess, who is the chairwoman of the African People's Solidarity Committee, a white woman, and they uh, and they handcuffed her uh, uh, her a friend who co uh, her roommate uh, housemate, and they uh, uh, you know they occupied our building. They stole all kinds of equipment, materials, etc., and they occupied these buildings for up to eight hours just taking stuff. And uh, we don't know everything they took. They took our radio off the air in St. Petersburg, Florida momentarily for a brief period of time. They went into our archives. They, uh, we have 40 years of more archived material from the African People's Social Party and the overall movement of Africans and other people around the world. Uh, they, they took things from those archives. They took, our fi they took financial records and what have you. All of this, is, this happened on July 29, 2022. And so uh, it would be, uh, uh, it, we are unindicted co-conspirators, co uh, they say. We are co-conspirators with the Russian uh, 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 person, the Russian uh, who, who they uh, have indicted already. And they said that, uh, that uh, it, it put us in a very precarious kind of situation because we, we don't have uh, standings in a courtroom because we haven't been indicted. So it's not like we can go to court and say, hey, what are you doing to us that we demand that this stop because we haven't been indicted. We have no standing. We're just there. And with this, this threat any given time of the government uh, uh, attacking any time that they want to, uh, uh, et cetera. Uh, and uh, of course, they they've got all of our materials. They're building whatever they want to construct in terms of whatever case they want to, uh, they want to put forward. Yeah. Well, the thing I, I want to point out to people, I want people to remember that <laughs> law enforcement did not handle Dylan Roof this way. And Dylan Roof had killed uh, black people in the church in, in Charleston, South Carolina. They arrested him calmly. They took him to get uh, food, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they took him, they yeah. brought him in. Right. And listen to the way that they treated Chairman Amalia Shetela, uh and the members of his movement. So this is 
very important all because they they basically claim that you have ties to Russia. And to that, even to that, I still push back and say, does that mean that you should receive that type of response, a militarized uh, response as if you had murdered someone? And I think that's the thing that's really alarming uh, to me. But they've been doing this for a long time, trying to take down African groups in this country in particular uh, that preach about socialism or trying to help out the community in some way, shape or form. Look at what they did to the Black Panthers. They had people actually infiltrate uh, the movement to take down Fred Hampton uh, because they see it as as a threat. Um, but this has been in increasingly so. You would think that even in 2023 that things would have improved in reference to this, but things have actually gotten worse, uh, particularly since this conflict with Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, I think that uh, there's a crisis that this country is experiencing, and it's a normal, natural crisis, because if you have a system uh, that rests on the foundation of enslaved people, and you got to remember, uh, you know, Palestine is in the is in the news right now, rightfully so, because of the murder that's being committed against those people by settlers who are there. But you have to remember that the United States is a settler colony itself, uh, that it's not like uh, the white people who are here are indigenous to this land. It's, a, it's it, you know, they're trying to do in Palestine uh, what they've attempted to do here in this country. I mean, it's, 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 you know, you don't see indigenous people walking down the streets uh, in, in, in our communities, our neighborhoods, and you don't even hear them being talked about unless they're in the room and what have And they live in concentration camps that people refer to as reservations. And you talk about uh, uh, Gaza, for example, being uh, an, an outdoor prison. Uh, what is a reservation? It's a concentration camp. And and uh, North St. Louis is a concentration camp. It's an open, uh, it's an open air prison, just like Gaza is. That's the colonial mode of production that this whole thing is constructed on that. So now you have this crisis because every time people strike out to try to win their freedom, their liberation, et cetera, it shakes the foundation, it shakes the entire social system. Now you've got a situation where uh, uh, entities that were supposed to be uh, non-significant uh, right uh, you know, uh, 1994, it was supposed to be over for Russia. Clinton, William Jefferson Clinton, you know, uh, did a victory dance. And, you know, uh, they talked about this unipolar world that they dominated right now. And then China, of course, uh, people used to laugh at China in this country. You know, you don't have a Chinaman's chance, they used to say. And China has become an extraordinary power. And, uh, it was a part of the whole struggle against colonialism that China was involved in. And, and now uh, it is contending for its own space. It's not uh, trying to attack the United States, nor is Russia, as far as I know. They're just contending for their own space. And the, and the US and the colonial powers are determined to dominate all the space in the world, politically and economically, uh, to control the entire world. And, uh, it, and the illegitimate white nationalist state of Israel is a projection of that uh, <clears throat> that attempt at, at world domination and specifically uh, targeting, uh, 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 well, it's not just uh, Palestine. Palestine is, is, is extraordinarily uh, important because it's the vanguard of the whole struggle for the liberation of the Arab people, uh, but it's the whole Middle East, it's the entire, all of the oil and and, uh, and, and Northern Africa and what have, and Israel plays this, this incredibly uh, role uh, in carrying and functioning to destabilize, destroy, undermine. I mean, it's in Syria, it's, 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 you know, it contributes to every contradiction that you see there and much of what you see in Africa. Another thing I, I want to bring up, so I want to pivot a little bit into uh, Israel and Palestine because there was an event recently uh, shout out to Medea Benjamin because she's she's a fighter. She's one. Um, it says breaking dozens of anti-war activists with code pink interrupt Secretary of State Anthony Blinken at a Senate hearing to demand an immediate ceasefire uh, in Gaza. And I just want to play this clip really quick. Not shrinking back. Not in the face of Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Not in the face of an intensifying strategic competition in the Indo-Pacific and around the world. If the witness will suspend, and I ask that everyone again respect this hearing, we will suspend until the room is cleared. The is calling for a ceasefire. Shame on you all. The world is calling for a ceasefire. The American people don't want to support this brutal war. Stop the war. Stop the ceasefire now. Stop funding this brutal massacre. That 
that Israel is doing on the people of Gaza. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Thank you, Senator. So shout out to Medea Benjamin. And you can see that there are people in the audience here uh, with their hands raised. And I believe that's supposed to be blood on your hands uh, in the audience. Shout out to Medea Benjamin and Code Pink for you know speaking out against this war as they have done uh, other wars as well. There's a point that Medea Benjamin brought up there that the American people do not want this. So I've been at a couple of protests uh, here in Boston. There's a huge one I hear coming up in D.C. as well. The American people, and it's not just the young people, because having been to this protest, there's people of all different ages, there's families, like people brought their whole families out to these protests. The American people do not want this conflict at all. And this is a time where I feel like when we compare it to Russia and Ukraine, for a while, I think a lot of Americans were on Joe Biden's side with, we have to support Ukraine. Even that's starting to change, considering the amount of money that has gone to Ukraine. People have started to speak out against that. But I don't think that Joe Biden expected this type of blowback with this particular situation with Israel and Palestine, even so much to the point that is actually affecting his polling numbers. He just dropped 11 points in the month of October alone among Democrat voters. This time, I really do feel like the American people are more vocal early on about a conflict than we were with like the war in Iraq. Uh, for example. And I want to get your your opinion about that. Why do you feel more people are are outspoken uh, and being against this this particular war early on compared to others? Well, <clears throat> I think what has happened is that <clears throat> the Palestinians uh, have forced uh, uh, themselves on the agenda. Uh, as far as the U.S. government was concerned and the illegitimate entity of Israel, uh, they had quieted the Palestinian movement. They were making deals with Saudi Arabia, with Egypt and others, and uh, they were appropriating resources to just uh, make uh, uh, the Palestinian question disappear. Somebody has said that, uh, in fact, we said it in, in the 1960s, uh, that uh, Israel uh, exists uh, uh, because Palestine was disappeared. I mean, it was pushed into non-existence. And so, uh, but the Palestinians came up and it shocked everybody. And uh, uh, the great uh, uh, Israeli defense capacity, its intelligence capacity, uh, its technology that was supposed to be able to see if anybody was coming, et cetera, that was shattered just, uh, and, 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 you know, people came fighting in every way they could fight. And, I, and it happened so suddenly uh, that it 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 took them by surprise that like Vietnam, uh, people were able to see it. Uh, uh, after Vietnam, they learned from Vietnam, and then they took the reporters and embedded them. So the reporters that that happened subsequent to that uh, themselves felt threatened. They were with the U.S. military, but now they are seeing it, and they are seeing you know bombs dropped on hospitals and babies killed. Uh, uh, et cetera. And uh, I don't think that people want to be associated with that kind of murder. To be able to see it uh, automatically, uh, you know, uh, offers a suggestion of complicity if you don't say something, if you don't stand out, because they're doing it in the name of the American people. And they're not doing it. Say this, they're not saying this is Blinken's killing. This is Biden's murder. This is America's murder. And everybody who identifies as an American has to be opposed to that. So I think that's part of what it is that we're seeing. The Palestinians have forced it. The Palestinians, people have been quiet. They've been killing Palestinians, killing Palestinians, and everybody's known it. You've been seeing it, but they've been quiet. And so this this, this uh, 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 counter-offensive by the Palestinian people, this bold act by the Palestinians, I mean, coming from, 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 from land, Coming in, whoever heard of somebody making a fight on hang gliders and things like that? I mean, they were ingenious in terms of, I mean, they broke through uh, this this extraordinarily in, uh, impenetrable uh, uh, defense uh, that they had established to lock the Palestinians into this 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 prison. And that's what uh, is true. When you talk about uh, Gaza, the population is smaller than Brooklyn. And, 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 and they use it as a bombing range. They're just murdering people in hospitals. They're murdering people you know, in their community. They say, here, 
is a safe zone that you can leave. Get out of get out of Gaza. You got 24 hours to get a million people out of Gaza, they said. And then the routes that they established for people to leave, they murder people when they're trying to leave. This is what they're doing. And so uh, obviously uh, it's something that it's an obscenity, uh, uh, but that's how colonialism works. And that's really important for us to say. That's what George Floyd is. You don't just kill people. You put your knee in, your, in their necks and in this obscene, brutal kind of way that terrorizes the entire community. It's an example that they set. They dehumanize you, even in the violence, it's a form of dehumanizing us, the Palestinians, the African people, et cetera. That's how colonialism works. That's right. Another thing I want to mention too, um, shout out to Al Jazeera and other independent media, you know, journalists that are there on the ground because they have been able to get out the story of Gaza uh, via Twitter, um, some part of Facebook. Facebook started blocking some of this information, yes. but they've been able to get those videos out on Twitter. So we're all able to see what's actually happening. That's how I found out when they told people to move from the northern part of Gaza to the southern part of Gaza. That's how I found out that they were blocking the exits, that people yes. were showing up there and they were preventing them from, from getting out. Then there's also this issue in reference to colonialism this idea of the greater Israel, which uh, Richie Medhurst has been really good about this, explaining like what Netanyahu has talked about at these conferences, that the goal is not just to stop with Palestine. The goal is to go into the southern part of Lebanon, part of Syria, uh, part of Jordan. I think there's a, a small piece of Saudi Arabia as well. And the goal is to really push the Palestinians out into Egypt, even though Egypt said they can't take millions of people, but right. to push them out. But with colonialism, the goal is not just to take one small piece of land. The goal is to expand. That's Personal. how colonialism works. That's right. That's what, uh, that's what they call it in this country. Uh, uh, they, they, what was it? How did they characterize this movement uh, from the small uh, co colony of settlers and the uh, uh, you know, throughout the whole thing, the expansion, that's what it is. And uh, it's massive gentrification. It's, uh, you know, to, to push the whole people out and replace them with settlers. And, and this is something that must be understood about Israel. Israel is, is white. It's white. I mean, they have their black people who are there. There are black people in the military who are there. 50% of the, of the Africans who are in the military uh, 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 in, in the state of Israel have been in prison. I mean, you've got black people who are there. They sterilize African women who are there. They talk about Ethiopian Jews and what have you, and they're catching hell. It's a white state. And, and, and uh, uh, I mean, even the concept, I mean, what's the difference ultimately in, in the master race uh, as it might've been characterized here in the United States or characterized in Nazi Germany uh, and the chosen people as the basis for being able to take over people's lands and resources and properties. It's extraordinary. As a political uh, 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 motivation for taking resources away from people, to, to be there as the chosen. And then also this, this thing about they're doing it because of the genocide and genocide was committed against Jews. They were murdered, they were killed and what have you, but they had a leadership that united with the system that killed them in Germany. They united with the system and transferred what that system was doing over into Palestine. And they're acting just like the murderers of Jews in Europe against the Palestinian people. That's an extraordinary thing. That's what the whole philosophy of Zionism uh, permits uh, them to be able to do that. So the Jews, uh, 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 you know, uh, caught hell in Germany. And, and obviously one has to, has to be opposed to, to murder to, to that, that happened to the Jews. But we have to be opposed to murder, period. You cannot have genocide, period. And, and if, in fact, what happened to Jews in Germany is a basis for them looking for a homeland, uh, then it seems to me Germany or Frankfurt would have been the logical place for them to get that. Palestinians did nothing to them. Black people have done nothing to them. Arabs didn't do this to them. It was other Europeans, other white people who did this to them. And I would remind people in 1906, uh, Germany uh, did something similar uh, to African people in Southwest Africa. And went to Southwest Africa and the Herero people, the genocide, the murder that they committed there was a precursor to what happened later on uh, uh, to Jews uh, right there uh, in Europe and in Germany. But when the Jews were Germans, there was no massive protest against what was happening there. The point is that we have to be opposed to colonialism. 
And colonialism is nasty. And it what it does, it treats the colonized as the others. And, the, and it creates a, a, it creates a, a philosophy that justifies murdering the others. And the, they got away with it in the 1960s. They were able uh, to have some element of success because they, they raised the issue of the Russian communists, the, the boogeyman, the Bolsheviks, communists, et cetera, et cetera. And so they were fighting against the communists and the communists' uh, fear. And people were taught when I was young, I saw, I saw, you would, you, you, you wouldn't remember this, but you get under the, and as even as children, elementary school, you get under the desk because the bomb might come any day. You hide from the atomic bomb that the Russians are going to drop. And then you had that. And then in the 1960s, you had this Russia phobia, this Russia, Russia, Russia. And then you had the black thing. And so you got black militants, black power. You got black thing. And all of this to terrorize people and make them do cruel things and horrible things and justify wars that they're going to make against black people in this country and peoples in other places. But it can't work today. I'm telling you. And that's what... You know, the cold pink, I'm glad you showed the cold pink uh, video because, um, you know, uh, the New York Times a month or so ago did this whole thing that identified cold pink in a way that almost uh, was like an indictment. You anticipate indictments coming against cold pink uh, as well for the kind of work that they are doing. So I really, I'm really impressed by the fact that they went in and took that stance uh, uh, in solidarity with Palestine. And I think more and more people are going to be doing it. And uh, that's what part of what we'll be taking with us on November 4th in the Black People's March on the, on the White House. And I'm gonna, I want to get to that in, in just a second, but I, I want to get your opinion about this belief that some people feel that this is not our fight. So I've, I've been arguing with people on Twitter for quite some time that have told me that Black people should not care about this issue with Israel and Palestine. I heavily disagree with that because, first of all, genocide should affect everybody everybody should push back against genocide everyone should push back against occupation of people i feel like what's happening to the palestinian people is very much connected to what has happened to black people not just in this country but also in africa uh, as well and one of the things that I, I point i've been pointing out to people is that i don't think a lot of people understand that black revolutionary leaders actually stood in solidarity with Palestine and the Palestinian people. If you were to go to Palestine and Ramallah, there is a, a statue of Nelson Mandela in Palestine. You know, Angela Davis, for all of her more liberal stance that she has today, she stood in solidarity with Palestine and still does, uh, according to a recent interview that I just saw as well. Malcolm X stood in solidarity with Palestine. Palestine. So I feel like a lot of times, uh, black people, particularly in this country, we have been brainwashed by a whitewashed version of our history as a people in this country based on the textbooks that they have given you know, students in the classroom. So a lot of people just don't understand and don't know the truth about people like a Malcolm X, the truth about people like a Fred Hampton, unless a movie comes out about them. But I think people really need to understand that when we talk about the IDF in Israel, People need to know that the IDF trains police in the United States. So if you're out in the streets marching, you know, in, in solidarity for George Floyd or whoever else the victim of police brutality will be this month, you need to understand that those police officers, the NYPD has been trained by the IDF forces that are oppressing the people in Gaza and in the West Bank. So to me, I say, no, we should make this our issue. It should be important and we should not turn a blind eye to it. I want to get your take about that. It is our issue. And I think the IDF, uh, you need the Israeli defense force. You know, it is our issue. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, in 1964, Malcolm X was in Gaza. He was in Gaza. That's being destroyed right now. And uh, he was murdered shortly after. He was murdered in 1965, not too long after he returned from Gaza. And most of us who were in the movement at that time understood that one of the reasons they killed Malcolm was because he had moved to internationalize this struggle of black people here, taking it to deal with the Arabs and, and, and throughout Africa and what have you. So that's our struggle. And, and, and Malcolm was very clear on that. We saw in the 1960s, 1960, 67, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Uh, came out uh, in solidarity with Palestine after the so-called 1967 Six-Day War, as it was characterized, and uh, came out on the side of Palestine. And all the white liberals and 
all the folk who supposedly loved black people at that time, they took their money back and we were organizing in Mississippi where, where we were being killed, murdered in Mississippi, trying to organize black people against colonialism as it expressed itself there. They took their money back, left us stranded without transportation, that kind of thing, because we stood on the side of Palestine. And, and, and 1960, uh, 60, uh, 1970 or so, uh, we bought uh, a, a, a full page ad in the New York Times of black people in solidarity with Palestine. We've always been a part of the same movement. You got Fanon, who people claim to love, you know, Franz Fanon, you know, who uh, promoted uh, the, the struggle against, uh, against Israel. You have uh, the Black Panther Party, historically, has done that. So that's been a part of that. And the reason it's, it's, it's not known is because they murdered most of the people we're talking about. Malcolm is dead. Fred Hampton is dead. Remember, the Black Panther Party destroyed by the same forces that we are talking about now. And, and then you have a repression that's so great, you can't even have a discussion about it because they say you're working for the Russians. They will come to your house at five o'clock in the morning and bomb your house and what have you. They say you're talking about for Russia. Why, why am I working for the Russians? Because I said that black people should take the United, United States before the UN uh, for violation of the convention, the 1948 Convention on the Prevention uh, and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide as it applies to black people. Because uh, we organized and got 130, more than 130,000 signatures. And it was uh, on uh, this, uh, what do you call it? This entity on, on, on internet that, uh, 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 anyway, it was, it was taken down. They took that down uh, uh, as a part of the attack that they made against us. Uh, uh, you're talking about, uh, what did I do? I, we, we ran candidates uh, for office in 2017 and 2019 demanding reparations for black people. They said the Russians paid us to do that. Uh, even though we've been doing this for 50 years, that's what we've been doing for 50, and black people have been Black people were the first out of the gate. In 1948, when the United Nations passed that convention, 1952, black people were at the United Nations with the huge document char characterizes we charged genocide against what was happening to us. They said, I work for Russians because I, I oppose uh, uh, this, this war that the United States is making against Russia using Ukrainian bodies and, 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 and entities as the vehicle to do that. So Russians and Ukrainians are being killed in this they said the Russians paid me to do that. So they said, I use what they characterize as free speech, uh, but it ain't free. And they demonize, the, we may become the others. The Russians, the boogeyman, the black people, the boogeyman. And they also infer here something very insidious, that it must be Russians because black people don't have uh, the agency of our own. We don't have enough sense. We don't have enough agency to say, this is our issue, this is our stance, et cetera. And that's what they will do even with the Palestinian question. They will say that it's not, you know, they will say it's not our, our, our issue, our case, et cetera, et cetera, but somebody must be uh, influencing us to do something that's against our, our interests. But that's not the case at all. We have interests as, as people. Uh, we have agency as people. And most of the people around the world, I mean, even as we have in this discussion, the thing that's disturbing to me is that there are forces who, in the name of supporting Palestine, would, would, would actually work to isolate the Palestinians from the overall struggle against colonialism. Because if we have in this discussion, there's a discussion being promoted in, in bourgeois and in the colonial media that now that since the black people of, in, in, in places like Nigeria and Mali pushing France out, now black people are just being killed you know, uh, by other black people who are the terrorists, et cetera, et cetera. So, it seems to me they're setting up a situation where black people should be, where the U.S. and other forces can go into and back into Mali, back and to rescue France uh, or to rescue colonialism. Look at they want to use how Kenya, they want to use Kenya to go into Haiti uh, to attack uh, African people there. They're talking about CARICOM, all of this. This is colonialism. In Venezuela, what they do with Venezuela, Cuba, that's colonialism. And, and all of that's a part of what's happening to Palestine now and the Palestinian issue has to be taken on uh, within the context of recognize it's a part of colonialism, a colonial uh, a, a mode of production, just as what's happening to black people is colonialism and colonial mode of production. We're in this thing together. And I want Palestinians uh, locked uh, arms with me in this struggle. And I want people from Venezuela to lock arms with me in this struggle. And I'm gonna lock arms with the Palestinians, the Venezuelans and everybody else who's fighting against this social system. 
That's right. Uh, well, there are some um, people that are uh, speaking out in agreement. Uh, Black for Palestine said 2,000 plus Black voices demand a ceasefire. Now, we are making the statement as Black people in solidarity with Palestinian people committed to our shared liberation. The genocide in Gaza is an emergency and we must act uh, now. Um, and this also mentions uh, Angela Davis, Cornell West, uh, Kalani, Mark Lamont Hill, uh, No Name, Saul Williams, uh, Warsan Shire, and more. Um, so that was blackforpalestine.com. And then I want to bring up this event that's coming up soon, uh, November 4th. So for those of you watching, if you're in the D.C. area, November 4th is going to be lit. Because there is the the palace the, the, there's the Palestine March that's happening November fourth, and there's also the fifteenth annual Black People's March on the White House. Can we talk a little bit about this, uh, Chairman? The fifteenth annual Black People's March on the White House is also a Palestine March. We've always held Palestine high. It's always been a part of our our uh, national Black political agenda for self determination. And although there has been some uh, effort to try to split the two, but uh, it is Palestine. We march, we march against colonialism. And we also have created, uh, uh, as in July uh, 8th, uh, uh, we created this, this um, uh, anti-colonial uh, free speech mobilization. So that we, we're doing it in Washington, DC. Uh, they're gonna be um, Mexicans and Puerto Ricans and Filipinos and, and various other people. We're doing it uh, in Los Angeles, California. Uh, it's also going to be happening. Uh, we're also uh, having uh, a protest at the U.S. Embassy in London. We're also having protests at the U.S. Embassy in Pretoria, South Africa. Uh, there's going to be action also uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, Lungi, uh, in Sierra Leone, and also in Liberia. So all of that's going to be happening November 4th. Black people are on the move now, and we're in solidarity with the Palestinian people, et cetera. Uh, like I said, it's an anti-colonial mobilization. We're not going to allow them to isolate the Palestinian question or to isolate the struggle for black people. Yeah, and I want to point out some of the speakers. Of course, people that you guys know, uh, Garland Nixon is going to be one of the speakers. I feel like Garland speaks at a lot of things. Um, Ajamu is going to be one of the speakers as well. Betty Davis. Um, I'm just scrolling through some of them here, some of the ones that I know like offhand. Um, uh, Nefta Freeman is going to be one of the speakers. So definitely, like I said, if you guys are in the D.C. area, November 4th is going to be lit. You can't sit back and tell me there's nothing for you to join and get involved in. There are several things uh, happening. That is the International Solidarity uh, for Palestine Day, by the way, guys. So there's going to be things happening all over all over the world. So definitely check that out. Uh, if you're in the, the DC area, I think that's, that's really good news. And I just, I love seeing this. I love seeing this. You know, I have to tell you, um, chairman, after the George Floyd protests, I feel like the energy, the, I don't know, organizing energy and protest energy was starting to fade away. Uh, because there were other police brutality incidents that happened after that. And I feel like people did not get into the streets in large numbers in reference to those particular cases. Uh, but then I, I saw like movements start to emerge again in reference to, you know, anti-war movement in reference to Russia and Ukraine. But even when we compare the anti-war movement with Russia and Ukraine, it does not compare to the thousands of people that I've seen out in the street in reference to Israel and Palestine. And I have to say it is great to see people mobilizing again. I think so. And I think it's great to expose that uh, that settler state um, and because uh there is no way that colonialism, you can you cannot reconcile the, the interests of the colonized and the colonizer. They are, to, they are uh, opposite. There's, there's no reconciliation there. And uh, Israel exists at the expense of Palestine. And so the Palestinian, we say long live Palestine, free, free Palestine. And we say that the unity of Africans and Palestinians is live and that it is absolutely necessary to, to have victory over this whole colonial mode of production. That's right. And uh, really quick before you go, uh, any update on that, the DOJ uh, case? I know that you guys were released, but I think a lot of people are asking, like, is it all settled or are there other things that you have to deal with? It's not settled and we're not released. I'm on, uh, uh, I have to get permission to go to Washington, D.C. I have, uh, I'm under a $25,000 uh, signature bond 
My passport has been taken away from me. I have to uh, report uh, to somebody like a parole officer once a week. I have to get permission to travel from one place to the other place. Uh, and so it's not over. And uh, right now we're scheduled for trial uh, in February. And so uh, uh, that's Black History Month, by the way. And uh, so uh, the thing is that uh, much of this on November 4th that we are dealing with also is to push back against that. You know, we're not going back uh, to the back of the bus or to some kind of pre uh, revolutionary period where black people have to bow and scrape and what have you to get along. And so uh, that's that's effectively what we're saying. We're saying that uh, not one step backwards, uh, that the FBI attack on the black, attacks the black liberation movement again. We say drop the charges now. That's the, one of the demands that we're making and free, free Palestine, long live Palestine. And so we have this, this combination uh, of, of uh, contradictions that we are dealing with and calling everybody. And it, it doesn't matter if you plan to be in the DC area uh, prior to now, plan to be in the DC area, uh, knowing that these events are going to, going to be happening and come in solidarity with the black liberation movement. And, and, and we're saying that the black liberation movement has always stood with Palestine and will continue to stand with Palestine because we end this thing together. There are some people who may be marching and talking and what have you. They do this uh, as um, a, a part of uh, their protests, you know, practice and tradition. But black people and Palestinians, it's not just a matter of protest. The fact is life and death for us. Colonialism must go. We must defeat colonialism. Come to uh, Washington, D.C. for November 4th. Join the Black People's March uh, on the White House and join in solidarity uh, with uh, Palestine and force the U.S. government to drop the charges now uh, and defend the African liberation movement as well. Awesome. Well, Chairman, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you very much for having us. All righty. Bye. Uhuru. All right, guys, that was Chairman Amali Yeshitela. Awesome, awesome. Guys, again, I just want to remind you, you know, people are still being either heavily censored or they're being targeted by the DOJ, by the FBI, again, for going against the status quo. If they were willing to smear uh, the Hoover movement, if they'll smear Amali Yeshitela, they'll smear you too. So this is why, and I'm trying to tell people when we talk about the censorship, this is why I continue to mention, you have to talk about the fact that Facebook is trying to censor people who are against the status quo. Uh, Twitter has been, they're, they're doing some censorship, but not as much as Facebook and Instagram. Uh, this is why they've been deplatforming people on YouTube and things like that. Like they really don't want this type of message to get out. They want you to be a part of the status quo. So we really do have to support people like Amali Yeshitela and the people that are out there in the streets fighting. Amali Yeshitela has been doing this longer than I've been alive. So that's just something to, to keep in mind. Someone asked me, can white people come? Yes, Turbo, white people can come. Again, like it's not just black people that are in this fight. There are white people that are in the Huru uh, fight as well. So again, November 4th, if you're in the DC area, don't, don't come to me and say, there's nothing for me to do. Don't, don't tell me, because listen, I'm in Boston, so we don't have as many protests as DC does. DC has protests all the time, I feel like. But if you were in the DC area November 4th, there are multiple things for you to get involved with. Again, that is Palestine International Solidarity Day. So there's going to be things happening across the globe. If you can go, don't miss it. 